My name is Jenny Morgan and I am one of the trustees of the Owls Trust. We run a sanctuary here uh, specialising in owls, although we do take in other birds of prey when necessary. There's a resident population of around about 35 owls. It does vary from time to time because we do have other sites and other people who look after birds for us, so they come and go a little bit. We keep some of our owls together, uh, different species together. Um, they're usually owls that have been brought up together. Um, so they've been chicks and uh, at the same time, and they've been raised together. If we do that and the pair seem to have a strong bond, then we allow them to keep that bond. Um, Quite often, owls that are brought up uh, together will not form a strong bond and so in that case we do separate them when they get to oh, probably about three or four months. Owls are sometimes dangerous. The, the most frequent uh, time when you'll hear of owls attacking human beings is when the human being approaches a nest or a mate. and. There have been instances of owls um, injuring people um, because people have got too close to a nest site or a breeding site. Um, but other than that, no. Owls will try to avoid contact as much as possible. The captive born birds that come into us um, are birds that their owners no longer want to look after uh, either because they're moving house and can't take the owl with them or uh, because they get bored frankly with them. Very occasionally we are asked to remove an owl from its uh, owners because of neglect or um, other perceived cruelty to them. Owls, um, th there's a rule of thumb about the length of time an owl can live. Um, the smaller the bird, the shorter the life is the easy rule of thumb. Um, so that the very small ones that we have in captivity will live for maybe about 10 years. In the wild, it would be four, maybe five years. The very large ones can live up to 60 years. In some cases, longer. Among our residents, the, actually the oldest one we have at the moment is Aled, who is um, a European or Eurasian eagle owl. He's 32 this year. Um, he's not been with us all his life. He used to belong to um, a, a Faulkner who used to do displays. But Aled couldn't see the point of flying to and fro just to get a half a chick when he landed. So he would do it a couple of times and then he would just sit there and look at his owner. And so very quickly he was retired from um, the display team and he was eventually brought to us to, so that we could provide him a home. The owls that we keep in captivity are not released and therefore uh, it doesn't matter that uh, the way we feed them uh, takes away their ability to hunt. Having said that, some will, if, if they do escape, some owls will um, be able to hunt um, and, and keep themselves going. But generally speaking, uh, the owls that are on display to you, to the, the public, are owls that have always been in captivity, their parents have been in captivity, and therefore the need to hunt doesn't uh, arise. When you look at the injured wild birds that are brought to us, we look after them in such a way that they don't begin to associate us with food. They've already been able to hunt because they've been out and they've learnt to hunt. Um, and so all we need to do is make sure that they don't 
that um, come to think, oh, human being, they'll give me a handful of, of chicks. And so they're, they're nursed and cared for in such a way that that doesn't happen. It's important to remember that birds of prey, generally speaking, are born with the instinct to hunt, but not necessarily the skills to hunt. They learn those skills in the few months they have with their parents after they've hatched and before they have to go and find their own territory in their first winter. There are certain species of owls that are decidedly in danger of becoming extinct. The project we're involved in in the Dominican Republic is uh, concerned with a, a species of owl called the ashy-faced owl. It's a type of barn owl. It is under threat, we believe, um, because of the expansion of uh, the infrastructure and particularly tourism and agriculture in that country. It's an owl that's only found on the island of Hispaniola. The other one, of course, that's in danger in the UK is the barn owl. Numbers in the 1930s, I, as far as I remember, were around about 30,000 breeding pairs. It fell to um, around about 3,000 breeding pairs in the 1990s. It's beginning to creep back up again because of measures that have been taken, but a, quite a lot of um, education particularly is necessary uh, to stop that owl becoming extinct in the UK. It, taken globally, that one is okay, but in the UK uh, it's, it's really seriously under threat. One of the reasons why this charity um, got underway was uh, as a result of the Harry Potter films because everybody thought, ooh, we'll have an owl for a pet. And of course, um, they tended to choose barn owls because they're readily available and fairly cheap and there's no restriction on you keeping a barn owl. You could go home now, go online and buy a barn owl, which is something we deplore. Um, and of course, in the, the wake of the Harry Potter films, um, this was done a lot. And then barn owls like to get into a hole during the day and hide away. And um, they are actually very boring pets for children because they don't want to do anything during the day. Um, they're more active at night. <laughs> owls, nocturnal, so on. The public can help us um, to fund all this work. Um, by coming here and donating, uh, leaving us legacies in their wills. Um, we have a scheme whereby you can adopt an owl. Although some people think we should just let nature take its course, I actually don't think a motor car driving at speed along um, an expressway is nature taking its course. That's uh, human beings' intervention. And so I think we are justified in intervening to pick up the bits and try and put them back together again and return the bird to its home territory.